Right, uh, so a couple of little things, tips and tricks on ModStep um, that I've just come across um, recently. I'm, uh, sorry if the camera's a bit shaky, I'm just holding the camera for this one. Um, right, one of the things I've found with ModStep is it can be a little bit glitchy when you're putting in into app, uh, sorry, into audio apps into it. Um, if you look at this one, I've got the LP5 app, which if you've looked at my previous videos, you'll you'll see what that's about. And I've also just started using the Launchpad app as well uh, for launching clips, which actually works really well. Um, I found quite often, first of all, it can be a bit of an issue when you put a new track in. At the moment, it's behaving itself, right? If I put that in, I put the Sunriser in, it's actually loading it okay. I found in the past, a lot of times, it just crashes the app and you've got to try it several times. There you go, it's opened it now. You've got to try it several times to get it get it working um the other um thing i found was that when i first load up the app um let me just change my settings okay all right so i'm just going to shut the app down i'm going to close all of these right so if i go back to that project i just did so if you load it in like this I've seen on those apps open. If you click on the one, so I'm going to try and open LP5, and that happens, all right? It keeps crashing. Every time you do it, you load it in. Wait for it to start, all right? Let's try the launch pad. Bang, crash, okay? Which is a real pain, but I found a way of getting around that if people are having the same problem as that. And this, this hasn't crashed on me once since I started doing this. So if you go to your settings, which is here, and then go on auto start plugins and plugins and turn that on. Okay. What will happen is if I just shut it down and restart it again. Okay. What happens is it will load it and it will automatically start whatever plugins you've got or not. Now, sometimes again, this I have to, it's a pain this because I have to keep doing this several times. Okay. There we go. We've got it on, right? Give it a second in the background. It will load them. There's LP five loaded by itself. Then we should get the launch pad. There's launch pad loading by itself. And then we should get the Sunriser. There we go. Okay. So that seems to work really well. As long as the app starts up first time, if you have it on that setting, it seems to sort out any, any kind of problems uh, with that. Um, and then the other thing I've just been messing about with is program changes. Um, so I just load my current live set in. Because what I found was, um, particularly on the mini log, I find it was a real pain having to scroll through all of these to find um, the, the patches that I wanted for uh, the song that I was playing. Um, so you can send program change messages out um, to a certain extent. And I'll show you why. Um, so if I just go on here, if I put this on, so that's on that strings set him on this track here okay on perception i've got it to set a program change so when i press that i'll try and get them both okay hopefully you can see it's now just changed to that patch okay so the way to turn it on is you've got to make sure that the program change thing is on there and then you put in your value so let's get rid of that that you want it to change to. For some reason, it seems to be one less than the patch on here because that patch here is patch seven. So whether it's because it runs from north or one, I don't know. But if you want it to go change to patch seven, you would need it one less. So it's, it's the, the value is six on there. I think the way the mini log works with uh, program change MIDI messages is you can only go from naught to 99. So you can't go on the user settings as far as I know. But the only issue I've got with it is it only seems to work with a direct USB connection between ModStep and the Minilog. Okay, I tr I've tried doing it because before, as again, watch the previous videos, you'll know how I've got all this set up. Uh, I'm using the Roland UM1 as my um, USB MIDI interface between all my gear and the iPad. If you've just got it set up on that, it won't change, it won't send it. I've tried it loads and loads of times and it just doesn't seem to get through to the mini log. So what I've done for now is, because you need to send it, these are all my uh, connections, where is it? Um, 
you need to make sure so what i've got is basically i've, I've got down here somewhere this usb hub so I've taken just the USB out of the mini log, going into the USB hub, and then it appears in mini log. And you've just, if you just, I think it's just MIDI CC. I'm not sure. If, I don't think you need notes as well. But you need to uh, have the mini log sound ones all activated. You don't need the clock because you're not sending any clock, and that's on the MIDI out. So it's not just a normal mini log out. That doesn't work. It has to be on the sound one. Okay. So that's the way I've got it to work. Um. You seem to obviously need to have a direct um, connection between the two. I was going to try it on the System 1, uh, something I might try just to see if it can change. Because I've, I've, I do program changes on the System 1 from Ableton Live, because you do sub-bank, which changes the bank, and then your patch as well, which works really well. I'm not sure how this would deal with that, with needing sub-bank and program changes as well. But this one's not, I, I don't find this as fiddly as the mini log because here you just like bang bang and you've changed to the patch that you want whereas with the mini log you kind of go in through and think, oh, which one do i want so you know for the sake of an extra usb connection it does work really well and then i know that when i launch that clip i'm into the correct sound so i mean this one for example um i'll turn it down has now has now changed it to that one i'm not sure if there's anything on that one yeah that's and again, that's changing as well. So I've got three at the moment that are changing the, the patches uh, on the mini log, which is really useful from a live scenario because I don't have to worry about scrolling through all the stuff on here to find the one I want. I just launch that clip and I know I'm away um, with that. Um, I'll, I might do another video on the Launchpad app as well at some stage. I'm not going to go into that now, but because uh, I was using the LP5 app, which is pretty good and works quite well, but then I suddenly remembered the Launchpad app because uh, it's got effects and stuff on it as well, which is very cool. Um, the basic version of it is free. If you want to put your own samples in, you have to buy an upgrade. I think it's five ninety nine for that. Um, and I've also got this actually syncing, doing the MIDI sync. I, I paid for the upgrade for that as well. I think which is two ninety nine. Um, so I'm actually at the moment controlling everything from the iPad because um, that's sending out the MIDI sync. But I might do a different video on that because I don't want these to be too long. Again, so hopefully that was of some use to you. If you're having particularly those problems with your apps crashing mod step, make sure you go to settings, turn on auto start, auto start plugins, and it seems to eliminate that problem completely. Okay, thanks for watching. Any comments, questions, suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Try and watch the adverts if you can. I know I say this at the end of every video, but I'm going to say it again anyway. If you don't mind just sitting through an advert for a minute or two before my videos, it gives me a few pounds. It helps me keep all of this lovely stuff going. Um, and as well, if you like the music I do, you know, try and stream that millions of times or actually spend a few quid and go and buy it as well. Okay, thanks a lot. See you on the next one. All right, hi, just a quick additional bit to this video. Um, I realised, I'm not in the studio now, um, hence the lovely pink background of my bedroom. Um, yeah, I realised there's one bit I just missed out on the programme changes. Um, what you've got to make sure, there's my mini log one, is on, you need to go to your, kind of your MIDI settings thing, which is that one there. And then that's down here where you map all your uh, parameters that you can do. You've just got to make sure that program change is dragged in there as a parameter. Okay, so if I just get rid of that. Okay, so if yours looks like that, what you want to do is actually you've got the mini log template here, which I don't actually half of those don't seem to be mapped properly, but uh, just grab your program change, drag it into there, make sure it's turned on. So I think it's always on, but um, make sure you've got a line across that and then it should work. You've got to remember to do that so it uh, knows how to send a program changes. Otherwise it won't do it. Okay, just a quick additional bit, um, just while I remember to do that bit. All right, cheers.